All right, guys, we're going to jump right into this now. I did make a video, a couple videos earlier this week. You can check those out down below that kind of goes with this uh, project here. Now, what we're doing here is building a retaining wall. It's about 35 feet long, four feet high, but we had to throw some piers in here. So we, this is what we call a pier and grade beam setup. So ideally, you'll pour the pier separate, you'll pour the grade beam separate, and you'll come back and pour the retaining wall separate but we did everything here monolithic so if you're in the san francisco bay area you are looking for this type of work hit us up all our information is below also if you're in the sacramento area uh, our information is below as well so you want to make sure your team has experience doing this um, like i said ideally you'll want to pour each part separate that means the pier separate the gray beam separate and the uh the retaining wall itself separate so you guys know how we get down check it out any questions any comments leave those down below we're about 100 subscribers away from 18,000. so if you haven't subscribed to the channel definitely appreciate if you do and if you have definitely appreciate you again remember it's cool to ask for help hang around people that's positive and if you wake up with good intentions everything is going to be all right i might jump in and out of the narrative but if i don't Again, leave all comments or questions down below. Appreciate you guys. All right, guys now if you want to check out a video of us putting these rebar cages together i'll leave a couple videos down where we show the whole fabrication and how we do everything on site ideally most guys will call in and get the rebar cages built but for us for some reason murphy law where if i order a 14 foot cage i need a 16 foot cage so we tend to do those on site and um like i said you can check out the video how we go about putting them together now as far as lifting them and putting them in place anything about 14 15 feet we can do with number five or number six rebar other than that ideally we will uh, use a bobcat or excavator so i just want to jump in here and tell you guys that again appreciate you guys checking this out and i'll leave those links down below appreciate it
cut down there. All right, so ideally these gray beams are 18 by 18, but they have been, we have another video I'm working on where it's actually 32 by 24. So you guys want to be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't to check that video out. But this one here, and ideally most of them are 18 by 18. We got three number fives on the bottom, three number fives on the top, and we have the number four squares or stirrups they're called. I believe they're about 12 inches on center here. We also have our rebar gun, which makes quick work on tying these all together. So a lot of contractors out there uh, say they tie better by hand, but when you're doing this much rebar work, you're definitely gonna need a rebar tying gun. So anybody that wants to buy any tools that we use on this site, I'll leave down the links below. Again, appreciate you guys. Want to just jump in here and let you guys know about concrete gray beam. Appreciate it. Right, so I get asked a lot what holds the uh, actual retaining wall together. So ideally, most of our retaining walls are eight inches uh, thick. So we use what they call a Simpson tie WT8. But on this gray beam, as you can see, we're installing, we're gonna use a Simpson tie WT18. Now they go up as far as I believe WT32. So when you're putting these retaining walls together, you definitely wanna make sure that you use these Simpson ties. Um, this kind of holds everything together and we ideally we put them about about 12 inches on center um, but we kind of eyeball and freestyle it we've been doing it for a while so it's normally 12 to 16 inches on center if you're doing the retaining wall for the first time I definitely recommend 12 inches until you get the hang of it just want to jump in and let you guys know that again any questions any comments leave those down below appreciate it All right, so all our rebar for the wall is number five, 12 inches on center. Our verticals go all the way down to the bottom of the gray beam and it's tied into the gray beam as well. And also with the piers, we have four number fives coming out of the pier that go about 10 feet down that's tied into the gray beam. So all this rebar is really locked in together so this is one of the good things well one of the benefits if you can pour which we try to do is pour everything monolithic again this is our first time really setting up and pouring a retaining wall gray beam and piers all at the same time like i said earlier in the video ideally this will all be separate it'll be three separate pours but we kind of did it on this one well we did do it on this one and we got a couple other jobs that we're probably going to uh go ahead and do it on as well so you want to be experienced with this team or have a team that really knows what you're doing but if you're in the san francisco bay area sacramento area that team is us so hit us up all our information is down below appreciate you guys checking out the video any again any questions any comments leave those down below and yeah and i'll get back to you i'm pretty quick on responding to the uh comments appreciate you guys continue checking out the video
All right, guys, appreciate you rocking with us. Um, I'm going to leave a couple videos down below of this project as well as pouring the swimming pool pad here is about five yards. And us also pouring the concrete retaining wall and stripping the concrete retaining wall. I'll let you guys see how that came out, which came out nice. Now, we also got another video I'm going to leave down below of pouring a 100-yard concrete driveway. It took about 115 tons of base rock, 5 tons of rebar, 100 yards of concrete, 15 finishers. I'll leave that video down below. Check that out. And appreciate you guys. Remember, it's cool to ask for help. Hang around people that's positive. And if you wake up with good intentions, everything's going to be all right.